Alright, in this video I'm going to show you guys a comparison between the two Iron Man Mark 1 figure that, uh, oh, one I recently acquired and uh, the one on the left is the version 2.0 and the one on the right is the 1.0 and uh, there's the exclusive piece. Let's take a quick gander at that first. There's the translucent Mark 1 doesn't do anything there's no articulation point whatsoever but as a little translucent figure it's kind of neat to have I guess if you want to recreate that um, movie one scene where he's taking the mark one apart and then uh, trying to build the mark two you could use this as uh, one of the props there And here's the backside of that Mark I translucent figure. And uh, even this tiny little thing has lots of details, which is uh, very cool. Right, so here are the two Mark I's, and uh, the base is definitely different. You can see. The original one comes with the uh, generic base, circular, uh, oval shaped base, while the new one, the 2.0, comes with uh, a little environment piece where it has a Stark Industry rocket buried on the ground there, and then some boulders and uh, some am uh, there's an ammo, ammo pouch or ammo container in the back over there. And uh, let's get a good look at the two figures from the front. And let me take them off the base so you guys can see the height well, difference. Alright, so they're standing side by side. As you can see, the version 1 on the right is a little bit taller than uh, version 2 on the, on the left here. I guess the body it's a little different maybe. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, maybe the neck it's a little shorter. That could be it because it looks like it has a little more gap. In the next section than it does with the 2.0 right here. So let's look at the back and here's the back side of the two. Uh, not a whole lot of differences between the two. Uh, I believe the, uh, the parts are all the same. Uh, there are only a few things that are different uh, between the two like the undersuit. Uh, this one the older one, it's, uh, huh, it's actually lighter than the newer one. The new one has a little more weathering on it than the older one, I believe. And then as far as the contraption on the back here, it's exactly the same. Even the tubing, the metal tubing, they're all exactly the same. Uh, just the paint job's a little different. Uh, the canister, you can see right here, that houses the battery. This is a little different. Uh, that's just the paint job, but otherwise it's pretty much identical. I believe they use the same parts for those. And here on the hmm, on the calf, you see this piece and this piece. It's painted differently, but uh, the dent and stuff. They are pretty much identical, except for um, the silver bits right here. By zooming even more, you can see the texture is a lot rougher on the 1.0 than it is on the 2.0. You can see the, the texture is a lot smoother, while this one is uh, way rougher. Now one very, very noticeable difference between the two, 1.0 there's the head sculpt of Tony Stark and then the 2.0 you can see it's pretty much night and day as far as the head sculpt is concerned let's take a gander at the 1.0 first there's the Stark head sculpt it looks okay uh, for uh, when it came out and here's the 2.0, much, much better 
the likeness is definitely a lot better than the 1.0. So here again, 2.0, 1.0, 2.0, and 1.0. Now the ARC reactor is exactly the same, same design, same everything, but uh, the 1.0 it sticks out a little bit more while the 2.0 it flushes with the the armor quite nicely so it doesn't stick out so if you look at it from the side profile shot you can see the uh, arc reactor doesn't stick out and while the 1.0 this whole section sticks out like that which is kind of weird looking but here you can see it's completely flush and as far as the inner suit, uh, there is actually a difference between the two. The 1.0, it's a little darker. It might not look like it uh, on camera right now, but 1.0, the inner suit is a little darker, while 2.0 is a little lighter. It's actually a shade lighter than the 1.0. But material-wise, I believe it's uh, still the same that leather-like material, that fuzzy leather-like material. It's exactly the same. Alright, then uh, in general, the armor itself, uh, the 1.0 is a lot rougher. It feels like there's uh, layers and layers of stuff on top of it, while the 2.0 is definitely cleaner. You can see, uh, you still see these little uh, layers of material on top, but the overall, the overall, the armor is actually smoother than the 1.0. 1.0 is a little rougher. Now, uh, after taking a gander at the movie again, uh, I noticed uh, actually both of these are incorrect. Uh, the armor itself is actually really smooth. So even this one's a little off, while this one is completely off, because it's never this rough. The material was never this rough uh, in, uh, on film. It was all smooth. I mean, you see, you still see the weldings and stuff like that, but uh, the texture itself, it's a lot smoother than what this or this shows. But this one, the, uh, the 2.0 is a little bit better, but still not completely accurate. So hoping that if they do make a diecast version, of the Mark 1, hopefully they'll get the material all correct as far as the texturing on the Mark 1. Hopefully it's uh, it's very smooth, like these shoulders, shoulder pads, and even the helmet itself, the face mask itself, needs to be a lot smoother. And uh, as for accessories, the 1.0 I don't believe there was an exclusive version for the 1.0. It only comes with an extra pair of hands. Uh, you got a pair of fists and then a pair of relaxed hands. That's it. While the 2.0, if you didn't get the exclusive, you wouldn't have this one. But you will have this uh, flame, flame piece, flame effect piece where it could actually, uh, could actually loop it around the wrist. Uh, I think it was this side. I think it's this side. So, loop this around his uh, wrist. So it looks like he's uh, shooting out uh, flame. And if you get the exclusive version, then you will have this translucent Mark One as well. And this video would not be complete if I don't show you the King Arts Mark One that I have in my collection. So that's a 1 9 scale instead of the 1 6 scale which are the Hot Toys version. And uh, the 1 9 is uh, quite a bit shorter uh, even though it's on a base right now it's still a lot shorter than the other two. So let me give you a close-up of that one as well. So here you can see the King Arts one. Um, can't see the eyes. And then the uh, majority of it, it looks very similar to the Hot Toys version. It's just uh, the detailing, it's a little lacking. Just a tad bit, not a whole lot. I mean, it's still got a lot of stuff going on. But uh, if you're comparing to the Hot Toys, it does lack a little bit of detailing. 
and there's the base that it comes with this which is a very nice base and uh, this little clacker here has magnetized so you could remove that if you want to or you could just leave it on here it's a good looking piece and here's the back side of the Mark 1 from King Arts you can see uh, on the back you still has a lot of tubings wirings and all that stuff but they are made out of metal like the Hot Toys version and uh, I don't believe this figure has a light up feature either unlike the Hot Toys where uh, there are two lights one in the arc reactor and the other one on the forearm but uh, yeah that's what it looks like so as I just mentioned uh, this figure has light up feature and then the compartment is right here it houses uh, three of those uh, batteries and then uh, the button is very well hidden it's uh, this little button right here so if you press it if you press it down and then uh, here let me rotate this guy back over then you can see the arc reactor lights up and then uh, the forearm there's the uh, the rocket uh, the missile a button lights up which is this right there and in the in the film uh, he actually flipped that up and to fire a rocket out of it so yeah that's really cool there's the chest one nothing around the eyes because it is just a face mask it's a very crude looking Iron Man so yeah Alright, so the Mark 1 on the right came out 2008, which cost about 150, and then uh, the 2.0 on the left came out 2012, and it cost 220 dollars. So uh, a big jump from, uh, well, I guess the time uh, being that one was 2008, and when it was 2012, four years, and it jumped uh, a little bit, uh, actually quite a bit. But now it's even worse. So if you, and um, yeah, so anyway, so there they are. Um, price difference between the two, it's uh, it's a bit of a jump. Uh, but again, it was uh, four years apart, and uh, did they make a huge improvement between the two? Mm, I say uh, justifiable, uh, even though the armor itself is exactly the same. It's just uh, the texturing is definitely different. Uh, they didn't re-sculpt this uh, armor at all. It feels like they just smoothed out the layers, the, the top layer a little bit. And that's about it. That's all they did. And uh, the head sculpt is definitely different. That I could give you. Uh, that I could give hot toys on that. And then the paint job is a little bit different. But... Uh, <sighs> Are they accurate? No, uh, both aren't accurate at all. Um, if you look at the film, mm, the colors of the metal, it's uh, definitely a lot lighter and uh, a bit more reflective and uh, smoother, definitely. And uh, head sculpt, yes, the 2.0 is definitely better. Accessory wise, 2.0 does come with a little bit more with, with the firing effect. I mean the fire effect piece and the translucent Mark One, and that's what accompanied the Mark Two instead of the Mark One, and a nicer base. So if I were to pick, um, if I were to only buy one, which one would I pick? I guess, given the amount, if I if if it was now today. And uh, this cost the 2.0 still cost 220, and the Mark uh, the 1.0 still cost 150. Which one would I pick? I probably would go with the Mark uh, the version one on the right because it costs uh, significantly less. And then as far as detailing, it's not that much of a difference between the two. 
Uh, head sculpt does look a lot nicer, but I would still pick the original one. But if uh, the um, diecast version comes out, I'll definitely try to get that one as well. Not sure when that'll happen or if that'll happen at all. But uh, looks like they might, cause they release every other figures from the first seven marks minus Mark One, all came out in diecast form. So I would imagine the Mark One will get a diecast treatment as well. But how many pieces are diecast? We're not sure, and uh, most likely not that many. And uh, how much would that probably will cost? I'm scared to think that's gonna cost 400 just like all the other ones that came out uh, yeah so yeah so there you go there's the comparison between the two Iron Man Mark 1 by Hot Toys thanks for watching